did horse girl make your head hurt? Well, chances are, if you're watching this video, it did. But good news is you're not alone. I had made my head hurt a lot and I had to watch it, then rewatch it just to kind of get a grasp on it to make sure that I was really wrapping my head around everything that I was seeing. Now, obviously this is going to have spoilers. If you're looking for something that is just a review, I've linked my spoiler-free review in the description below. Sarah is a troubled young woman and from what we've been told, she has a family history of mental illness. So it's really easy to just dismiss everything that we see about her is her suffering from this mental illness. Now that is one viable theory. But the other thing to consider is that everything we see and everything that Sarah is experiencing is actually true. This is definitely a complex and convoluted timeline to discuss. I'm going to do my best to break it down so that it's digestible and also that it makes sense. As always, I want to know your thoughts and theories in the comments below. What did I get right? What did I miss? Let's continue the conversation there. First, I want to look at this as if everything that Sarah is experiencing is actually true and happening to her. There's a massive time loop going on with lots of entries and exits, and it's not necessarily linear. And I think that's something to really keep in mind as we go through this, especially if you look at it that Sarah is telling the truth or that everything that is happening to her is actually true. That it is not just this linear timeline where, okay, here's the beginning, and then this happens, and this happens, and this happens, but as it can be here, then here, here, then here, then here, then here, and back and forth like that, and we drop in and out. That way, when you put it in that mindset, it might become just a little easier to at least wrap your head around, to accept that what we're seeing could be true. Towards the beginning of the film, we see Molly Shannon look up while she's working in the craft store, having a conversation with Allison Breeze Sarah, and she sees the tail end of a horse pass by the window. Well, we know from the end of the movie that that is Allison Brie Sarah dressed up in her orangish outfit, hair all curled up and everything, walking her horse Willow out to the woods. Now, we assume that Molly Shannon isn't mentally unstable. So therefore, what she sees is reliable. At this point in the timeline, we know that it is after Sarah's first stint in the psychiatric hospital. And that's what the therapist says. So we go with that as our, as our baseline or our grounding within this weird timeline. She also learns that the girl that she has been seeing in the white room in her dream state and also the one that she wakes up next to in the psychiatric ward claims to be from another, from another time from 1995, I believe, that she has been dropped into this time and nobody believes her. So there's our real first glimpse that time travel is actually going on. A good way to look at this for the nonlinear view is that when we're shown the first time that Sarah goes to the psychiatric ward, that's actually her second time being there. The therapist has said, oh no, you, you were here before. And she's like, wait, no, I've never been here. Then later in the movie, when she wakes up next to the girl, that's actually her first time in there because the therapist is like, no, you haven't been here before. Oh, so it's being told out of order. And because of this nonlinear time and because Sarah can be dropped in and out of different times, this is how she is her own grandma. Or really, she's the same person. Now, Sarah believes she, she might be a clone. I believe, just based on what we see, is that Sarah and her grandmother are one and the same. How does that happen? Well, at some point, Sarah's mom gives birth to Sarah. Sarah then grows up to the age that we see her in, that we meet her in the film. She also matches in look and everything the photograph of her grandmother. Well, at the end of the film, we see Sarah lay down in the field and lifted up by unseen forces, the bright light, and then poof, she disappears. Well, I think at that point, she's being abducted by the aliens, willingly at this point, and is transported to the past where then she goes along her life as Sarah from the future, but in the past now, she has a daughter, which becomes Sarah's mom. And then the cycle starts over. Sarah's mom then gives birth to Sarah and she goes back. And so you have this loop going. Well, at some point, this probably weighs on her psyche a little bit because we know that Sarah's grandmother, really Sarah, taken back from the present to the past, dies as somebody just left out because of her mental illness. that she, the, They say that Reagan closed down the facilities, she's left out on the street and she dies a crazy woman. Little does Sarah know at the time she's talking about that, that she's actually talking about herself who went back to the past and then caught up. Does that 
Or are you following? Am I making sense with that? So while this nonlinear timeline makes a lot of sense to me, and her being able to be dropped in and out of time, out of sync with what we're seeing, and that all, like, it fits within me, I mean, I can rationalize that and put it into place, there's also evidence in there that really points to just her having mental illness. That what she's seeing, what she's experiencing, is truly all in her head. It's a break of her psyche and not of something that's going on in reality. One of those is that Sarah experiences two different roommates. They're wearing the exact same thing, but they're two totally different people. So who is the real roommate in this? And where did the second one come from? Because all of this time we see it as Debbie Ryan, and then poof, it's some other woman who's just banging on her door, and you know, obviously something's not right. She recognizes that Sarah's just a little off at this point. And we know that Sarah, like I said before, she has a family history of mental illness. You point to her grandmother having mental illness. Her mom can't deal with whatever stuff that she's going on, and she commits suicide. So she is, not because she commits suicide, but just th that she is having something going on mentally. She is dealing with some sort of mental illness, whether it's depression or anxiety or anything like that. And so it makes complete sense that Sarah also would follow in that line, that there would be something either from a learned behavior or genetic that it would affect her as well. Now think about this. When Sarah leaves the mental institution or the psychiatric ward or whatever you want to call it, in the middle of the night as she's going to then make her ninja suit, it flashes to Sarah up in a window watching herself leave. So is this illustrating a break in her psyche, an actual separation, that she is watching one part of her walk away while the other remains there? Maybe this is a way for her to segment different areas of what's going on in her head, to put it over here and then over here and over here to make maybe just make it all make sense to her, or at least in, in small chunks that she can deal with it. She's certainly a woman dealing with loss and trauma. Even from a young age, her best friend is thrown from a horse in front of her, which leaves her physically and even somewhat mentally impaired a little bit. We know that she has seizures and you can see from her walking and even her memory is affected by what happened to her in this accident. And then her mom committed suicide and Sarah is the one who finds her. Then you combine this with a roommate, whichever roommate you take, who is not really nice. I mean, she is very controlling, very manipulative, very talks down or talks to Sarah as a small child. Like, you need to do this. Why are you not doing this? Why didn't you do this? Everything that she does goes against how she purports to be as nice and caring. Sarah's also very lonely and doesn't really have any friends. Molly Shannon asks, oh, what are you doing with your for your birthday? oh, I think I'll go out with some friends from my Zumba class. Well, she doesn't really have any friends at her Zumba class. They, it, it's evidenced by just the conversations that they have that, and the looks that she gets. People are just like, you're just somebody. You're, you're a person in this class, and I don't really even know you. Her real friends, the people that she most identifies with, that she just is drawn into, are make-believe. They're on the TV show. And that becomes her reality, that she watches them, that she interacts with them, and even so much so that Darren that she meets in real life, she's obsessed. She's, oh, that's funny. You're like Darren on my TV show. That's just odd. And then even the TV show begins to shape her reality. It affects the way that she thinks of things. That's where the idea of cloning comes in. That's where she latches onto that. Because one of the episodes, one of them, well, we, one of them must be a clone, right? And, well, I'm experiencing something weird and off, and my grandmother looks exactly like me. Well, I must be a clone. And you see then that unraveling, even as she goes on the date. She wants to dig up her mom's body for DNA testing. I think maybe something that also lends itself to this theory that it really is mental illness is... Sarah, once she has donned that peach-looking ninja suit with the, the cool little backstrap thing that, you know, that's off of a mini blinds, as she cuts through the carpet and opens up the floor, really, I mean, she is allowing herself to dive deeper into her psyche and allow this delusion to become her reality. I mean, all of the things that she has seen now creep into her mind and they become real. The man that she sees to her right in the white room, well, that's the guy that works 
you know, a couple of doors down in the shopping center. She sees him pass by her door all the time, and now she connects those in her subconscious and is making that part of her delusion. The same thing goes for the girl that she has met in the institution her first time being there, that she is now, that girl is the one to her left in the white room as well. So all of these little bits and pieces are feeding in to the delusion that she has been abducted by aliens. She is making that her reality based on the little subconscious things that she's pulling from around her actual reality. More evidence is she's not really experiencing what she sees or what we see is when she makes her costume and then she sleeps with Darren and he transforms into the Darren of the TV show. She's just fully going into her fantasy life that this is where she's most comfortable. These are her friends. This is everything that helps her to feel safe. It helps her for, to feel real, helps just the ground to really be there. And if you've ever dreamed, you know how very real it can be. And word of advice, do not use the toilet in your dream. Trust me. So if Sarah really is just mentally ill, how do we explain or reconcile Molly Shannon watching the end of the horse walk by, which we know, or at least we've been shown, that Sarah is walking with the horse. So Molly Shannon just sees the end of it, but at the same time, Molly Shannon is talking to Sarah in the store. So how are there two instances of Sarah? How do we reconcile that if we believe that she is just mentally ill? Does your head hurt yet? Mine's throbbing. So for me, I'm of the belief that this movie is more of a sci-fi genre that what we see Sarah experiencing is not that of mental illness, but is actually of alien abduction and time travel. And the only way that I can even wrap my head around that so that it does make any kind of sense is that when I look at it from a non-linear standpoint, that Sarah can be dropped in and out at different points because that's how when we experience her at the mental institution for the first time, that's actually her second time. And when she wakes up next to the girl in the bed, that that's really her first time, even though that's us seeing her for the second. And I think also, even though we have the weird dichotomy of two different roommates going on, we see the big slashes in the wall of Sarah's apartment, and that lends itself to the abduction theory. I read an interview with the director, and he purposely left it with multiple interpretations, that we could feel comfortable with whatever interpretation we choose because there was enough evidence to point to that, but also enough contradictions also where we might question it or we could question each other's interpretations. But at the same time, we could feel comfortable and satisfied in the ending that we choose or the interpretation of the ending that we choose. Where do you land on the film? Is Sarah a victim of alien abduction and time travel, or is she just suffering from a mental breakdown? What did I miss? What did I get wrong? What did I get right? Let's continue the conversation down in the comments. I cannot wait to read what everybody thinks. If you like this discussion, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share it around with your friends and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.